Okay, to start out our time together this week, we're all gonna stand up on our feet and have a wonderful time of worship together. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me. Everybody sing I'm gonna lift my voice To glorify my King He is a mighty God And worthy of our praise We give Him everything He's good in every way He is always there for us He's good in every way Pouring out His awesome love He's good in every way He fills us up with peace and joy He's good in every way to our final week of Zoom. During Zoom, we have been Zooming in and Zooming out of the first five books of the Bible. Does anyone remember what they are? That's right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Whoa, so today we're gonna to be in the fifth book of the Bible, Deuteronomy. Together, those first five books are called the books of Moses because God used Moses to write them. So today we're gonna to be in Deuteronomy. We'll zoom in to some of the stories and we'll zoom back out and see what those stories show us about God. As usual, we're going to look at a picture that's zoomed in really close and then every few seconds it's gonna back away. When you think you know the answer, shout it out. It's a house. After wandering in the desert for many, many years, the Israelites were finally getting ready to cross into the promised land, the new home that God had promised them. On the count of three, I want you guys to jump up on your feet and do your best celebration dance, okay? One, two, three. Freeze! There was a problem because Moses had disobeyed God in the desert. 
God didn't allow Moses to enter the promised land with the Israelites. Okay, on the count of three, sit down and show me your most dramatic fake cry. Freeze. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses knew it was going to be his last chance to give the Israelites instructions. Let's find out what he told them. It's a ruler. Moses told the Israelites to remember the special rules that God wanted them to live by. Most of these rules came from the Ten Commandments. Do you remember the Ten Commandments? Well, let's find out what they are. You shall put no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You should not, you should not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Observe the Sabbath day and honor your father and mother. Do not commit murder, be faithful to your spouse, do not steal, do not lie, and do not want something that someone else has. Those are the last five Ten Commandments. God wanted the Israelites to remember the Ten Commandments because he knew that following those rules is the best way to live. God also wanted everyone to know that Israelites were special because they followed God. By living differently from all the other people, the Israelites would stand out big time. The other nations around them would see that the Israelites were living the best way possible and that God had blessed them. Moses had one more important thing to tell the Israelites before he died. Let's see what else Moses told the Israelites. <music> It's a handshake. All right, guys, I want you to hop up on your feet, and if you can, shake the hand of someone nearby you, or just pretend you yes. are, and say, you've got a deal. See, a handshake is what you do when you're making an agreement with someone. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, they made a special agreement with God. It was called a covenant. A covenant is like a special promise, and God promised the Israelites that he would love them, take care of them, and give them a new land in the promised land. In return, the Israelites promised God that they would worship only him and that they would live by his commandments. Moses wanted the Israelites to remember their covenant with God when they moved into the promised land. Let's do a final round of Zoom. Moses wanted the Israelites to remember all the ways that God had cared for them. He said that God was like an eagle who guarded his baby eaglets. God hovered over them to protect them. He caught them and lifted them up when they fell. He helped them to soar to the highest places in the land, and he fed them the finest foods. No other God was with the Israelites, only the one true God. God knew that if his people remembered how he had cared for them in the past, they would trust him to care for them in the future. Finally, after Moses finished talking to the Israelites, he went off by himself into the desert where he died. With Joshua as their new leader, the Israelites were now ready to enter the promised land. Wow, God sure wanted the Israelites to remember a lot of stuff. In fact, there are 23 different times in the book of Deuteronomy that God tells his people to remember something. So tell me, when your parents have something they want you to remember, do they sometimes write it down for you? 
That's basically what God did in the book of Deuteronomy. Let's open up our Bibles to the fifth book of the, of the Bible, Deuteronomy, and we're going to turn to chapter 32, verse 7. When you get there, you're going to see that it says, Deuteronomy 32, 7, is remember the days of long ago. Think about what the Lord did through those many years. Let's say it together again. Remember the days of long ago. Think about what the Lord did through those many years. Sometimes it can be scary going to a new place. I'm sure you can relate. So the promised land was a new place for the Israelites. But if you're going into a new place or a new situation with new people, it makes things easier on you if you can remember how God has provided for you in the past. It's easier to trust that God will take care of you in the future if you remember all the things that God has done for you out of his great love. Let's pray together and thank God for taking care of us and for teaching us so many awesome things about these first five books of the Bible. Let's bow our heads. How about you repeat after me? Dear God, dear God, thank you for providing for us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us guidelines to live by. Thank you for giving us guidelines to live by. Help us to remember your great love for us in the past. Help us to remember your great love for us in the past so that we can trust you with all our hearts in the future. So that we can trust you with all our hearts in the future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>